In the biblical book of Genesis, Cain and Abel are the sons of both Adam and Eve, the very first humans according to these stories. Adam and Eve having been created by God indicates that Cain and Abel are the very first humanly conceived beings. The oldest brother Cain would grow up to become a farmer, while his younger brother Abel would become a shepherd. It's understood that like most brothers, they had their fights and quarrels, but for the most part, they loved each other. One day, Adam and Eve told their children that in order to show gratitude to God, they would need to perform a worthy sacrifice, something special that would please their Lord. Abel immediately chose one of his best newly born lambs to offer up to God, and though it was important to him, he believed that giving it over to God was far more important than keeping it for himself. When Cain learned about his brother's selfless sacrifice, he was puzzled. He told Abel that he should sacrifice something far less significant. After all, he himself was going to sacrifice some old dried fruit that he was planning on getting rid of anyway. Other interpretations indicate that Cain was going to merely sacrifice some extra straw that he had lying around. But Abel was insistent on offering up his most treasured lamb, something in which Cain scoffed at. Why his brother was going to give away something so cherished was beyond him. But both of the brothers stuck to their guns and would go to present their respective sacrifices. In the book of Genesis, God is stated to have looked with favour upon Abel's sacrifice, but did not look with favour upon Cain's. While there doesn't seem to appear to be a vivid description from the passage as to how God made it clear he was more satisfied with one offering than the other, some interpretations of the tale use fire to represent this. The idea is that Cain and Abel both placed their offerings into a fire. Abel's lamb burnt up in the fire, and the flames roared as the sacrifice was consumed. But when Cain placed his offering into the fire, the sacrifice merely smouldered, and the fire itself died down. By this telling, it's understood that Abel's sacrifice was well received by God because of the magnificent way in which it had burned. Cain's, on the other hand, did not, implying that it was not as worthy as Abel's. Cain grew jealous. He couldn't see the logic behind why God had preferred Abel's sacrifice over his. He grew angry at his brother, and it would lead him to become consumed with venomous thoughts, those of which led him to sin. Cain lured his brother out into the fields one day and struck Abel, killing him. Immediately, Cain realised what he had done, but he wasn't so concerned with the loss of his brother, but more so the consequences he might face. He buried his brother in the earth, so that no one would find it, and went about his day as if nothing had happened. It was around the same time that God appeared to Cain and asked him where his brother was. Cain lied to God, claiming that he didn't know, before infamously muttering, Am I my brother's keeper? But God knew the truth about what had happened and challenged Cain, demanding to know how he could be so hateful and how he could take his own brother's life. The realisation of what he had done struck Cain so much so that he fell to the ground sobbing. God would not be so lenient with his punishment though. He condemned Cain, making it so that the grounds he worked would never yield crops. It's possible that this was also a metaphor, that whatever Cain would attempt to do in his life from this point on would result in failure, but that God specified farming as farming was Cain's profession and perhaps his purpose. Without a purpose, Cain would have nothing. God doesn't stop there though. He further condemns Cain to be a restless wanderer of the earth, furthermore denying him of any peace for what he had done. Cain would actually declare that the punishment was too harsh and that he could not bear such a fate. He also expresses his concern that if he is to wander the earth, he would not be safe and possibly killed. But God had an answer for that too, and declared that none in the world would kill him, because they would suffer vengeance seven times over. He marked Cain so that none would kill him, not to protect him, but so that none could end his suffering of being outcasted, denied, and ultimately shunned from God's divine glory. The story of Cain and Abel demonstrates the old idea that there cannot be good without evil, Abel being the good and Cain being the evil. It subscribes to the idea that sin or wrongdoing is a part of life, and serves to show us that even if we live our lives as honourably and benign as Abel, evil will always have an effect on us, whether this be a gradual evil that inflames Cain to kill his brother, or the evil act itself, which sees Abel become a victim too. It takes a dark look at sibling rivalry, showing us how far jealousy and envy can push someone, that they would even murder their own brother if only to console their own feeling of unworthiness. 
You might even say that this story shows us how rejection and betrayal can cause someone to become malevolent and hateful, in that Cain appeared to have loved God as well, perhaps not as much as Abel, well enough that he bothered to sacrifice something in the first place. He could have chosen to ignore God altogether, but his outrage at how God favoured Abel shows us that he must have cared what God thought. This rejection from God, a rejection that comes without reason in Cain's eyes, is perhaps the catalyst which turns him towards his dark path. For being rejected is disappointing in itself, but being rejected without reason is perhaps even more maddening. However, you might also argue that Cain only sacrificed anything because he was told to by his parents, and that his outrage towards God's favouring of Abel isn't because he cares about God, but because his younger brother outperforms him in this task, or is seen as more worthy, thus causing him shame. Some may even see a correlation between the tragic story of Cain and Abel and real life relationships, at least in terms of jealousy. For example, Cain becomes angry that God favoured Abel and demonstrates clear signs of jealousy, similarly to how one might react if they were trying to impress someone, only to be overshadowed by someone else. Jealousy is something we've all likely experienced at some point in time, whether romantically or otherwise, so I think it's accurate to say that all of us can at least understand Cain in this respect. While most of us would probably not kill the other person for outshining us or denying us of what we believe was meant to be for us, we may at one point or another have harboured some resentment for that third party, or at least imagined killing them. Either way, Cain most certainly acted wrongly in the killing of his brother, and we can see that in the magnitude of his punishment. The mark placed on Cain by God that prevents him from being killed by another not only ensures his suffering, but some might say serves to remind us that evil should not be repaid with evil. Those who came across Cain might have wanted revenge, revenge for having gone against God and causing the pain that he had caused, but upon knowing that they'd received God's vengeance sevenfold, it would spare them a moment to think about whether it was worth it, until they perhaps realised that killing Cain would only cause more suffering, for they too would be judged. But what do you think about the story of Cain and Abel? Can you relate to Cain's outrage, or do you think that he deserved what he got? Let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, and hit the subscribe button. Let me know what biblical stories you'd like to see next. Until the next time.